I can't fuck with snakes. I ain't all the way back from my people. I pray I was I ain't. for fame. I'm finna turn up and get they ass a taste. I thought taste. I was global. They screaming my name. I'm everywhere like I'm the Chicago way. Way. Yeah, overall, overall, little bro. I ain't never gonna stop posting you. I ain't never gonna stop posting Lola. I ain't gonna never stop posting KB Nini. I ain't gonna never stop posting a whole lot of other people. Anybody who can handle the media, I'm gonna keep posting. And as far as what you said, I don't take offense to what you said. And I understand what you said. And thank you for breaking it down too. So if what you're saying is accurate. As far as like, as far as like us helping each other. But regardless of what whatever the case may be, I'm not gonna sit here and say I made you, and you're not, and you're not saying you made me. Cause that's what, really, really what, what they was mad about. But thanks for making that clear. But all right, let's talk about some other shit. Now, Brick, there's you be having a lot of viral moments, and you go to viral people notice that. Now, let's talk about this one situation here. Rico Reckless. First off, he mentioned you in a no jumper interview. He said you were barking at the wrong tree. He was talking about him on the internet. You broke down the interviews that you don't have no real beef with him. And on top of that, you wasn't really talking about him. And I really tried to do research. I did. Th I, do I think the reason why he said that is because he saw our interview. When we asked you to say something positive about him, and you said you would be a bald faced liar if you ever say some shit when he never did no real shit in his life ever. I think that's what he was mad about. And he did talk about you twice in two different interviews. The first interview we talked about you was when the Witty Apparatus interview, we was talking about their yeah, You asked me to say something positive about him and I said I don't know him. I can't say shit positive about him. But you also but you also said you'll be lying if you sit here and say that because like If I said something positive about him, what's positive about him? Okay. When you made when you asked that question, I did research. Then I made a positive thread post. Hey, man, I'm gonna show you this shit. What's it? I made a thread post. Say it, highlight all the positive shit with, with, with Rico Records. I can show you this shit right now. Let me pull this shit up for you. Let's see. I know I collabed with him, but I, damn, I post so much shit with this nigga. Oh, so you gonna see this? Hold on, give me a second here. Give me a second here. I got it. All right, all right. The first thing, first thing that was positive about that, that we said, he gave credit to the rap rappers who influenced him. And Brad was who he was first listening to, like Lil Mister and Lil Jojo. Six Nine from Dorchester, L.E.P., Pac Man, King Louie, them, White Mike, them. Like it was like it started like with that way for me. Bo Deal, Twist, all that. It started like that. So like to me, I thought these famous as I'm just today ass so much. So like it just kind of like like ain't even get to like my era to like I really want to do it to like. The E-Days when I... And that's what... Yeah, he visited school and spent time with you from Chicago. Doing shit like this. Like, pass down towards and shit, don't fish him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then he also visited schools and... What else he did? He, he talked to you about the importance of education. What year was that? Hmm? What year was that? This was around 2016. This is 2016. If I'm yeah. correct. 2016. Yeah. There you go. When? 2016. Okay. How about this? This kid's going to school with 30s guy. What are you doing at them school now? Nowadays, we don't really see a video of him addressing those kids. What giveaways are you doing now? What are you doing for the community now? As far as giveaways, we haven't recently seen him do a giveaway. What are you doing for the community? I mean, recently it's come, What it's positive come message you putting out there now? Positive message you putting out there now? I got to rewatch the interviews. I don't think it's Okay, recently I haven't heard. Okay, how about this then? Like, he was supporting Chicago rappers who blew up before and after the fame. Like, Polo G's first song, Finer Things. He put, he promoted that back in 2017 before it blew up. Before it blew, wait, 2017? No, 2018. I, I, knew, I knew it was 2018 when he first blew up on September 1st. Liz Day, he was supporting him in the same year, in September actually. September 13th. Oh. Ain't that crazy? He was supporting Polo G, Cowboy, and Lil Zay in September of 2018 before they all blew up. That's something. Um, we, we sharing their music on this story, tagging them, saying they raw. I ain't gonna say what I want to say, you know, but yeah. Okay. Okay, how about this? Like, rappers put, that's pushing peace now. He was during the actual quote unquote war shot rap where everything was busting, like he said. He was one of the first rappers trying to make peace with the rival side, like Lil Reese, in this video. Oh, reckless bitch ass fucking with the ops again. 
game level. I just remember you, you said that kind of scared. Okay, you see, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Has that push a piece? You hear what he said in the video? Like, Breakfast with us again. Like, has that push a piece? You trying to cause disruption? Okay, he later on explained that in the DJU interview, like. Nowadays, rappers believe Pusha Peace is ops who, was, who, who are rappers that used to be into each other, getting up with each other. And he said he was the first one doing that back in the day. This is yeah. what I'm saying. What? Okay. And yeah. right, Just to close it out, I really would do, because I don't, you know, I ain't even really trying to go down. But um, just in general, that goes back to what I was just saying earlier. It's easy to squash some shit when you ain't did nothing. And you ain't did nothing to nobody or you ain't lost shit. So, you know, when you think back on it, like, the realest shit I did him say was he was a dick rider in so many words. He was never in tour with Reese and Dirk and them. He was just making distance towards them for nothing. And he realized he was doing it for nothing. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, when you realize you just out here disrespecting people when they did, homie, as a man, you a man before anything. Fuck this gang shit, fuck the rap shit. You a man before anything. So when you disrespecting a nigga as another man because another nigga doing it and you don't even know why, you don't even know why you doing it because this nigga doing it. It ain't even off the loyalty you got to this nigga because you said fuck these same niggas later. So it's like, no, I don't know. Okay, you, do, you, you got a point there. But basically for what he's saying is like, Based off what you said in that interview, that kind of did provoke him to go on the internet. Do you feel like that interview kind of caused it to even be publicized to the internet? Because our interview, we actually said something positive about it. He felt like he was not saying nothing and he was talking shit. And then he brought it on interviews. I just didn't have nothing positive to say about him. Like, what? Like, you can't get mad because I ain't got nothing positive to say about you. Like, if you're doing something positive for the community or you doing anything positive where you at, wherever you stay at, then I'm going to support that. I'm going to salute that. Like, but I sit back and just watch shit, and I watch what niggas use their platform and their name for, and it be nothing but negativity and bullshit. So it's like, I, I don't, this goes back to what we just talking about a little second ago. Another thing is with a lot of people is I don't hear shit but bullshit. You feel me? A lot of destruction and a lot of bullshit. Niggas is not versatile and this is not even for him, it's just in general. So it's like when I oh, look at a lot general. of people, it just make me just, you know, I don't see shit positive and I'm like, what's positive? Anybody can buy a couple chains, buy their homies some chains. That shit easy. You love them niggas. Like it's easy to go spend money on niggas you love. Like that's nothing. Like, I could go do that. You go spend money on people you love, it's easy. You love them. You feel me? So that's really nothing. So it's like, what positive message he putting out there? You feel me? What positive message a lot of these niggas putting out there? So I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of shit, though, in general, though, to be honest. I don't even listen to a lot of these niggas. So I wouldn't even know if they was trying to do something positive because all the shit they done put out just already turned me away. A lot of people have made diss songs. It ain't even so much as diss songs neither. It's just so much as what you stand for. Like, I watch shit behind the scenes. Like, I watch niggas' interviews. I be on YouTube watching shit, watching little lives and shit. And I just, I watch what people stand for. So, that's just really what it be about. Like, the music is a, another thing. That's that's your business, you feel me? That's, that's how you're supposed to look at that. That's your business. You as a person, that's your person. Like, that's how a motherfucker's supposed to look at you. Okay. So, if I'm fucking with a motherfucker, like, see, your fans, a lot of people be so pissed off when people got fans that just be going over crazy for them. Your fans are supposed to be one with you. So, me listening to somebody, if I'm listening to your music and I'm taking the time out of my day to play you and listen to what the fuck you saying okay. and rap your shit, and put you on my playlist, then you gotta be talking some shit I like. Mm -hmm. I gotta be one with you. 
Like, a fan is supposed to feel one with you in your music. So I don't like to listen to shit that I can't be in touch with. So, uh, I don't know. Honestly. Yeah. Speaking of listening to shit that's not, that you can't be in touch with, like, first off, yes, you are what, you are a great rapper. Everybody, anybody who listens to you knows you're a great rapper. And you know them tournament shit we be doing? In our tournaments, we be having you in competition and everything. And you, of course, you 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 you, you don't take nothing too serious. You you always are there just it is what it is, and that shit. And it's still it's just a funny shit to see, right? Yeah. We due due to the brackets being set up the way it was, you got put you got placed against Tay Savage. And when you when you saw that we posted it saying on lyrically he could not fuck with you. When you said that. People still feel like even lyrically he's better than anything, but, but that's because like they probably didn't take the time to actually hear your music and anything like that. So it's like when you're compared to people, are you always compa- wait, wait, when you compare yourself to other people? Do you always compare based on how lyrically it is? Yeah. Well, then with that being said, if you're not lyrically better than the next next person, you cannot say this person better than. Them. Lyrically, yeah, see, and this is what I mean by lyrically, see, when I listen to you, see, this is what people confuse, and a lot of people get this confused. They say everybody rap about the same shit and say the same shit. No, they confuse. We all rap about the same subject. This is like an essay. Mm. The teacher can give a hundred motherfuckers the same essay, but if y'all all write the same shit, y'all all ain't gonna pass. So, this shit is like an essay. We all rap about the same subject. Some people actually live in this shit, some people not. But everybody rap about the same subject. I be hearing the same shit. So, when you lyrical, I don't want to hear no repeated bars, recycle shit. So, I don't want to hear shit that you said in the song already. Or I don't want to hear some shit somebody else said already. That's a recycle bar. I don't want to hear that shit. Then, another thing is, motherfuckers can't do different shit. Like... You got to be able to rap on any beat. And then I feel like as an artist, if you can't freestyle, you're not a real artist. You can't consider yourself a real artist until you're able to freestyle do everything. You can't consider yourself a real artist. And a lot of these people, lyrically, they can't freestyle. Mm. They can't. And then when I listen to a lot of music, my brother was one of my biggest critics. And he used to always tell me, when I listen to a lot of people... He was when they used brother. My brother Chris. Okay. When I listen to a lot of people music, when they use punchlines, you can know if somebody lyrical or they basic. Because when they use punchlines and phrases and synonyms, they gonna always use like. Like this, hit them with something like this, like, like, like. When you mm-hmm. gotta use like too much, you're not lyrical. Those basic nursery rhymes. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, and that's what makes me different. I don't feel nobody can fuck with me. Because I could point out where every rapper don't use the recycle bar or use something twice in the song. Guaranteed. If mm-hmm. a motherfucker could find me that in any song of man, I give you a G. You ain't gonna never find it. And probably ninety percent of the music y'all hear out right now, I freestyle off the top of my head. Uh-huh. Okay, so two things. First off, you can guarantee that you never once used a recycle bar compared to a lot of rappers that's rapping right now. Guaranteed. All right, bet. And you also said, if you can't freestyle, you're not a real artist. Do not. Do not. I just watched um, YTB, Fat, Luzze, and somebody else. Wait. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They did the little, um, whatever, uh, freestyle shit, XXL, whatever it was, freshman class, whatever the fuck they did. And if you go back and listen, if you go listen to all them, that shit was garbage. Damn. That shit was garbage. It was only two raw freestyles on there and they was both females. Like, that show you who people is as an artist. When they go up there and got a do shit like that, that just show you who people is as an artist. So when you say lyrical, people gotta go off lyrics. And then you gotta really listen. I don't wanna hear no nursery rhyme, none of that basic shit, none of that grammar school shit that the kids can come up with. I wanna hear some real lyrics. 
and some real punchlines. Right. And when it comes down to Tay Savage, you never heard no real lyrics from him. If he was ever presenting his music. I heard probably like three of his songs. And then after that, I went back and listened to him again. I double back and listened to him again. He got he got he got a couple songs with some decent little punchlines in it. He he decent. He alright. Alright. He alright. Hmm. Alright. That says that. Alright then Brick. Let's talk about another thing that you that you went about that you went viral with. Now, we done an interview. No, 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 no. We gonna talk about you. What you did, what what recently happened went viral. A nine-year-old rapper, Lil RT, he did a Twitch stream with Casanet. On that stream, he said F King Von. And then Casanet quickly made him apologize. A lot of people feel like that boy was bogus for saying that. You said no, 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 no. they said they feel like he's bogus for saying that because and they, he was talking about King Von. You reposted this when when I posted it. You reposted it saying that was karma for Vaughn because he was telling little boys to do the same shit when come down to saying F two.